Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. I'm going to be speaking with lead researcher, Dr. David Vossler. He's joining us here from the Department of Neurology, University of Washington, to talk about the recent U.S. Uh, FDA approval of UCB's VIMPAT. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Vossler. Thank you, Neil. I'm happy to be here. Uh, give our listeners a, a look into your background. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then let's um, talk about this uh, FDA approval. Uh, well, thank you very much. So I am uh, an adult neurologist. Uh, I've practiced in the uh, Seattle, Washington area for, uh, oh gosh, coming up on 34 years. Um, I uh, did my training at Boston University and I came out here and uh, did my epilepsy and EEG training at University of Washington and um, joined the faculty. So uh, I'm um, primarily a clinician. I'm not a basic science doctor. And um, my passion uh, really since I was in my residency in Boston, has been epileptic seizures. Today we're going to talk about this recent FDA approval of VIMPAT. What exactly is VIMPAT and what condition is it trying to treat? Okay, well, yeah, VIMPAT is uh, an anti-seizure medication uh, that was approved in the United States in 2009 um, Mm -hmm. for treatment of focal onset seizures Um, and focal onset seizures are kind of uh, as the term maybe suggests uh, seizures that begin in a part of the brain a location in the brain uh, most commonly the temporal lobe but could be any one of the other four lobes on either side of the brain and so that was the case for uh, many years um, and uh, began um, to appear to us um, actually not long after that was FDA approved in 2009 uh, began to appear to us that it might work in the other main class of epilepsy which is called generalized onset epilepsy um, and um, that's a fairly good chunk, a uh, fairly good size number of patients. And <clears throat> we wanted to explore that um, as providers. And fortunately, uh, UCB Pharma, which is based in Brussels, Belgium, agreed with that. And um, so in 2010, actually, we began our first pilot study for generalized epilepsy. Um, and uh, things kind of progressed from there. And it really, it took 20, or excuse me, it took 10 years from uh, 2010 to 2020 to reach the goal line now, but we've uh, been successful and now shown that it uh, clearly works in generalized onset epilepsy as well. So it's now it's really approved for both major classes of epileptic seizures. Of those two classes, who is most affected by these generalized seizures? Okay, well, that's a great question, Neil, and it depends a little bit on age. Um, for uh, patients that... Um, our children, it uh, tends to, um, uh, generalized epilepsy tends to predominate. Um, so about 60% of children will have generalized epilepsy and about 40% of children uh, will have focal onset epilepsy. There are a few exceptions, odd types of unusual cases that we'll leave those aside. Um, in adults, so by the time you reach approximately age uh, 18, a number of those generalized epileptic seizure types in childhood have gone away. And so uh, the focal patients tend to predominate. So it's kind of the reverse. Mm -hmm. In the adult age group, about 60% uh, of patients have focal onset seizures and about 40% have generalized onset seizures. So again, it depends a little bit on age. Is VIMPAT uh, effective in both age groups as it is in both types of uh, seizure presentation? Right. Good Good question. Yes. Um, so that's what we studied. Um, the VIMPAT was initially approved for focal onset seizures. Um, and if memory serves me right, it was first for adults and then a pediatric indication was added uh, for focal seizures and then even a monotherapy. So it could be used by itself. We, that was an indication that was added later. Um, so, we, yeah, we wanted to study the generalized uh, types in both children and adults. And, uh, and that's what we did in this study. We looked at uh, children ages four and above plus adults, and um, uh, yeah, um, and we found in our study, um, which was published in the Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery, and Psychiatry in October of this year, uh, that uh, yeah, VIMPAD is uh, is effective in both children and adults. Before uh, the development of, of VIMPAD, what was traditionally the go-to treatment for these types of, of seizures? 
Yeah, uh, excellent question as well. So the uh, really the go-to treatment for many years uh, following uh, its approval in 1978 was uh, uh, valproic acid or divalproic sodium. Um, but unfortunately, valproate, we call it valproate for short, valproate um, has uh, lots of uh, potential side effects, um, not just uh, sort of cosmetic side effects like uh, hair loss, weight gain, tremor, but more potential serious side effects like uh, birth defects, um, other effects on the fetus, and if women take it during pregnancy, um, uh, liver effects um, mm-hmm. and effects on the blood blood forming organs. So, uh, uh, divalproex or valproic acid is um, you know it's been a mainstay for um, over forty years, but it's definitely a drug that we don't really want to start with. Um, after nineteen seventy eight, there was a big gap um, of. Uh, 17 years before the first new drug uh, came out, uh, Lamotrigine, um, which became approved for uh, generalized tonic-clonic seizures. And that was followed by uh, topiramate, uh, levetiracetam, and more recently, parampanel. But um, uh, all of these drugs have potential side effects. Patients um, don't always tolerate them. And so even though there were these five drugs out there, it turns out that about a third of the patients with generalized onset tonic clonic convulsions remain seizure, uh, continue to have seizures and um, had uh, difficulty with toleration of the drugs, these older drugs, or uh, um, just simply weren't seizure free. Have those side effects uh, been eliminated with Vimpat or or any of the potential side effects uh, uh, significantly decreased? Yeah, that's a uh, good question. The uh, uh, side effects with uh, Valparate are so numerous and involve um, uh, organ issues that um, we're really fortunate that we don't see those with uh, lacosamide or Vimpat. Um, and um, so, you know, it is not, it's been studied extensively, really, um, for at least 15 years now. <laughs> it's used worldwide, and uh, we are not seeing any problems with uh, bone marrow. We're not seeing any problems with liver uh, dysfunction. Um, uh, no significant incidents of rash or hypersensitivity reactions, um, and uh, we don't know about pregnancy. So I just would, you know, caution the audience that um, uh, we we just simply it's too early to know about any kind of uh, effects on the fetus. So um, one would have to exercise caution with that. Uh, but I think it does it definitely does represent an advance. Um, the way it works in the brain is also different from any of these older anti seizure medications. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a, what we call a novel mechanism of action. And that that may be important. I mean, we really can't say for sure how that would um, uh, affect our choice uh, of anti-seizure medication. But, you know, uh, the, I always like to say, you know, if you're, if you're out hunting with a bow and arrow, it's nice to have a, a, a couple of different kinds of arrows in your mm-hmm. quiver because you don't know what you might need. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, where can uh, patients and practitioners alike go online and get some more information about Vimpat? Well, um, I would say, um, the, first of all, you know, I always like to point to the scientific literature. And um, so our paper was published in Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery, and Psychiatry, October 2020. And it was in volume 91 and pages um, 1067 to 1075 and um, certainly um, you can look at the data there it's an open access uh, paper it's a randomized controlled trial I should add it's the largest randomized controlled trial ever done in primary generalized tonic clonic seizures so uh, I think it's important a large number of patients uh, children and adults um, and um, I think that uh, probably the the sponsor UCB has a website uh, where they where uh, pr- providers can get additional information about Vimpat um, at UCB.com, and I suspect probably Vimpat.com, although I'm not sure about that. Um, and uh, so yeah, there's information that's readily available um, if people want to look uh, look more into it. 
Great. Well, David, I appreciate you joining us here on the program this morning. Thanks very much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. David Vossler. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download us SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.